Hello everyone, I'm back with another video. Um, I got some pretty uh, unexpected positive feedback from my last one. I was kind of nervous uh, uploading it because I don't think I've- yeah, I haven't uploaded like a real-time sketching video before. I was afraid that it might be a little bit boring to some of you, but turns out I guess a lot of you found it helpful and I thank everyone for leaving such nice comments which I really appreciate and it definitely gave me a lot of encouragement to try and make more videos like that so I decided to make another one this morning. I actually wanted to start a new sketch- I was debating starting a new sketchbook because this one is so tiny and it's starting to really annoy me because there's really not a whole lot of space to work with. I was talking about uh, drawing bigger in my last video and I realized that this is like the tiniest sketchbook that I could possibly find. I'm like a little bit past halfway through and I don't know about you guys, but I have this weird thing where I have a new sketchbook sitting and ready to go that's like twice as big as this one, but I mentally can't start in that one until this one is finished. That's just how demented my brain is, so I think I have to like just rush through it and uh, and then I'll allow myself to move on to the next one. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. Um, I recently placed an order for some new art supplies and I I, I mostly got uh, a few of these Tombow water-based um, brush pens, which I really like a lot because, uh, first of all, you can cover a lot of area uh, with the brush uh, tip and you can also get into the details as well. These pens are super useful and the reason why I like them more than my Prismacolors, which I have pretty much abandoned at this point, is that they don't bleed through. It's pretty awesome because I like to use these cheap Muji sketchbooks and the paper is very thin, but as you can see, there's no bleed through and that's pretty awesome. So that's, that's why I like these a lot. So I bought a bunch more colors. As you can see, I'm still kind of really into this uh, nice pastel -y, lilac, lavender type of color scheme. And yeah, I decided to do some more studies, warm-ups. Uh, last time I was kind of, well, I've done a, a bunch more since then, obviously. But I'll do like a <clears throat> sketchbook tour eventually when the sketchbook is finished, hopefully soon. Yeah, I wanted to try going back to sketching with a Prismacolor pencil. I, I know that I've talked about the good things about sketching with a pen, which there are a lot of uh, pros, but some of the cons I find with me is, like I mentioned in my previous video, I can be very impatient, so I'll like start frantically putting down a lot of lines and stuff just to get it done. Uh, so w when it comes to a pen, the fact that there's no tool separation or step separation between like a sketch and a cleanup. Oh, I don't know how to explain this well, but it's like when I sketch with a pen, obviously I'll um, I'll put down some guidelines and I'll just jump straight into it. And sometimes I will like go back and forth between putting down really light lines and darker ones. So overall, the, the it'll be rougher. But sometimes I'll get so impatient that I'll just go in like pressing hard much sooner than I would if the process was separated separated into two steps, uh, which I used to do that a lot. I used to just like make a per some rough sketches with a pencil first and then go in with a, uh, with a ballpoint pen to clean it up. And that makes the result a lot neater um, like this. This is like kind of a study. Uh, I like to do Claire Wendling studies sometimes because I really like the shapes that she makes for limbs. So I, I was mostly Kind of studying the shapes and but i added a lot of like random crap like a wing and um, i changed the hair and the face a lot or whatever so i i, I did like an under sketch with a pencil to <clears throat> lay down the pose and then after i just kind of zoned into cleaning it up and adding whatever random details i wanted to but focusing on like capturing the same type of beautiful shapes that she has. I really like how her her female body is um, looks so fleshy. You know, like you could just feel like you could just pinch them. 
it's pretty it's pretty neat because it's very different from how i usually uh approach drawing bodies they look too too lean i guess in my opinion so i really like to uh, study her stuff sometimes just to teach myself how to do different types of bodies but yeah it's gonna get straight into sketch oh yeah one thing i forgot to mention is that in my last video i did include a link in the description to my pinterest board which i up i've been updating it like quite regularly recently with uh new reference pictures for doing warm-up sketches specifically and uh, if you guys don't want to find your own references and you just want something good to go you can you're welcome to use my pinterest board which i'm going to link in the description again so yes i'm going to jump into sketching and i will record the commentary for that when i'm done because i don't like to like talk and sketch at the same time it's super distracting so yeah okay so this is future me recording the audio because i kind of completely fell off track in terms of my youtube video posting schedule and this is like a couple of weeks or i don't know a week or something after i recorded the last little portion of this video in the very beginning and honestly <laughs> i think i'm like on week five of the quarantine and i'm just seriously starting to lose track of time oh <sighs> it's been kind of rough mentally but honestly i don't have anything to complain about anyways so uh last week was my birthday and i'm horrified to tell y'all how old i am so i won't but it's a pretty major date to be honest and i was a bit bummed out that i couldn't go anywhere and see any of my friends and family but at least like the place where i live my place is a pretty nice place to be stuck in thankfully so again no major complaints and thankfully i wasn't alone or anything and i had many pleasant phone conversations that day but i was kind of thinking about time you know i don't know just reminiscing about the years that passed and I guess I just wanted to tell you guys some information about what it was like for me when I was younger and obviously in regards to art <laughs> because that's what this whole channel is about anyways um, yeah so the one year that always sticks out to me is when I was 14 and I guess I'll just talk to you guys about why that's a year that I can remember pretty well and why for a long time um, until pretty recently, I always kind of thought of it as like the best year of my life, which is pretty random. Like if, if at any point, like five or six years ago, somebody would ask me if I were to pick one age that I would want to go back to, it would be the 14th, the 14th year. But yeah, so here is why. Basically, this year was where my art skills got up just enough, like not to make me want to tear my sketchbook to shreds every time I looked at it. And I hit this golden spot where I was just having the time of my life. I spent hours every day, almost all my free time drawing. And I remember the summers especially, th that, the summer of that year. Um, my mom used to send me to this Christian camp. And I was like one of those antisocial losers who would just go off into the woods and sit by the lake on my own. And <laughs> refuse to participate in any group of activities, especially if they were sports related. And if any of the staff approached me to ask me why I didn't want to join the other kids, I'd start asking them uncomfortable questions about plot holes in the Christian narrative and such. No hate on religion or anything. I'm not an atheist, but that's irrelevant. Uh, yeah, anyway, during this time, I was obsessed with this one story of mine called Hotel of Nightmares. And it was like this alternative universe to me that I just desperately wanted to wake up in one day. All I did was draw my characters, think about them, and write all these ridiculously stupid scripts, and I was just having the time of my life. I think the summer I clung to was the one where I was 13 slash 14 and about to go to high school. So here's the story time <laughs> i was such a loser so i went to an art high school that you had to get into and i remember during the open house in my last year of middle school i had this holy moment let me explain 
so this high school was a pretty bizarre place. Every door was painted and people looked super weird. I mean, by 2003 standards anyway. And I just remember I was walking past this part of the school with these huge windows and a long windowsill that people are just sitting and hanging out on, like chatting or whatever. I think it must have been like lunch break or something. Uh, it was just like this open house type of situation where a bunch of us still middle school kids who wanted to go to the high school came to visit and just take a look around. Yeah, and so this large window um, with the windowsill and this garden type of situation right outside the window, just trying to paint a picture here. And there was this dude sitting on the win windowsill with an electric guitar and he looked exactly like one of my characters. I swear to god, it's like one of the only times in my life where I remember time just suddenly slowing down and I was like gaping at this dude because I couldn't even believe it. It was like something out of a movie. Anyways, that's the end of that story because I that's the only time I ever saw him actually, but... So basically, this single three second moment snapped me out of this depression that I was suffering from on a regular basis and gave me complete tunnel vision. So I had this fantasy of like starting high school next September and somehow meeting this guy and whatever. I know I already said I was a loser, but here's the thing though. My depression vanished completely because I had something to look forward to and when I have something to look forward to, I can honestly laser focus on any of my tasks. Uh, so yeah, the months leading up to high school were just blissful as a result. Of course, a few months past September, I realized that that guy was probably a senior and graduated or it was just a complete hallucination on my part. <laughs> I never ever saw him again, but it doesn't matter. I guess the reason why I wanted to tell you guys that story is because I still think about that year sometimes and just how blissful it was and then later I kind of realized that the fact that I was actually it was the last year before I started putting up my art on social media uh, it was like this holy trinity of no depression no social media and tons of free time so I think that's what makes me remember it so fondly is that I will never have that kind of privacy with my art again and that kind of, you know, situation where you don't really have to worry about bills and life or the trajectory of life. Everything is just up in the air and you're not too responsible about your future and you can just kind of focus on the thing that you enjoy and that's all there is to it. There's like a million reasons why I will never to have I will never be able to have that again. When you're like 13, art doesn't mean anything, you know? At least I never thought about what it meant back then. It was just something that I did, and I never thought about how I was terrible at it or how broken my anatomy was or how I had so much to improve on. It it wasn't about any of that depressing shit at all and the only thing that ever bothered me was the fact that I couldn't quite draw my characters the way that I wanted to, but I never framed it in a way any different than that. And the only thing I wanted was to just draw my characters better. And I knew what I liked, so I looked at the stuff that I liked, and then I tried harder when I went back to my sketchbook. And that's the thing, it was just me and my characters, and I treasured the privacy. It was like the secret world, and it was just for me. You can only really have that when you're a kid, and it's the ignorance that keeps the secret world so magical and real. I really wish that I could have retained more of that. So I think I started posting my art online for the first time when I was like halfway through grade 9 maybe. My friends and I got into guy online forums. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but <laughs> I think it's dead and gone at this point, but it was a big thing back then. And soon after that, I made a Deviant art account because a lot of the artists that posted their stuff on Guy Online had Deviant art accounts, and that's how I found out about it. And once like impressing people entered the equation, it was never quite the same. And well, I mean, let's be honest, like who doesn't want to impress people, right? <laughs> that just never really goes away. And then there came the fandoms, and you know, a lot of things changed very rapidly. One of the biggest things I remember is, even though 
um, my priorities kind of changed and I was focusing on different things and it became more about having things to post or participating with other people and I think the communal aspect of art and all these social media platforms is a completely different fun aspect and it's super it's it's definitely great like I I don't regret any of that it was a great time it's just that it really did lose so something was lost in that process is all I'm trying to say <laughs> so I guess uh, circling back to why I started telling the stupid story in the first place is that I think the reason why I go back to thinking about that year sometimes is because it was the last year of no social media for me and I up until then I created so so many illustrations of my characters and even though they were kind of shitty because you know they were obviously of my skill at the time but I never quite had a time like that again until the last year at Sheridan because I, I chose to work on my own store. I, ch I chose to just like revive my own story and make a little trailer, animated trailer for it mm, for my graduation thesis film or whatever. And so I spent that whole year just doing visual development for that and just thinking about my characters. And I think that was the next biggest burst of personal art that I've ever done and I really really treasure that year also even though I mean frankly in terms of ed education or thinking about how attending school for that year cost me like over ten thousand dollars or more and I'm still obviously in debt because that's the kind of debt that lasts like a long time after being in post-secondary for so many years but I digress um I think it was still somehow worth it because I guess the framing of having to work hard and having a project that, I don't know, I, I have to complete, I guess, because it's part of the education thing, is what kept me so on track, unlike any of the previous years. But you know what? Maybe that was because there was all this other crap that I had to do that was related to school. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if maybe it's regrettable that I lost track so many times. Like, for instance, when I first started posting my stuff on social media, like when I was around 14 or 15, that's when obviously entering any sort of community. Like, I read some manga or comics before and I, I liked them well enough, but it wasn't it wasn't like a fandom level type of thing. I feel like fandom level feelings about a series or any sort of intellectual property come in specifically when you have other people that are obsessed and then the obsession kind of just catches on and it's a lot a lot of fun and it's a lot of fun to participate in the communities and make fan art and have people like freak out over the fan art that you make and I really got caught up caught up in that and for quite some time it was I was just kind of bouncing from fandom to fandom and I drew a lot of fan art in those days and I actually do think I improved a lot and I probably improved a lot more than I did before though it's hard to say because I still drew regularly the same way that I did um, before I started posting my art but now it was almost like all my efforts into finished pieces were focused on either commissions which I started taking soon after which were you know I don't even know how much I charged I think I charged like guy gold and then when I figured out that I could actually charge real money charge real money for it I, I think I charged like 10 or 15 dollars for like per picture which was insane but you know what you got to start somewhere plus I was 15 so I don't know I feel like it, it was a good place to start but anyways so all the finished artwork that I did was for somebody else. So essentially, art kind of turned into this weird like job-ish thing for me. I don't know. It was still a lot of fun, but when I think about it now, I did not really focus that much on my own stuff ever again, except for maybe 
the comic that I was working on for some years, but it was super on and off. Like, I think I ended up making something like 110 pages over the course of five years. So five years is a long time. Like, and those were black and white pages. So all things considered, I spent such a small fraction of that time working on my own personal stuff that it's pretty negligible. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess another advice thing that I would give myself is to not lose focus maybe so much. I don't know. It's all pretty pretty nebulous. Like, you know, sometimes I watch these like neat videos on YouTube where it's like tips or advice that's listed from like 1 to 10 and then people go in order. Maybe I should have prepared something more concrete for this video, but it's more of a ramble on my part. I don't really know where to go with it because I tend to not be too, um, I don't like regretting things, so I tend not to. Uh, I, I seldom feel regretful about anything because I'm generally okay with where I am at the moment and even in like shitty times in my life I, I found it I feel like regret is one of the most redundant emotions you can ever have but I guess if I were to talk to maybe the younger people who might be watching this video I would advise that you try not to get too caught up in the whole social media game of things I know that even back in DeviantArt like you know, people cared about page views, like, people always cared about the amount of attention that you get, I guess, from um, putting stuff out there. But now, it's it's really kind of grown into monstrous proportions, and one of the things that I kind of worry about is, for years I felt like social media and being so involved in social media was kind of strange like it created a weird rift between reality and the computer or the phone it's like those are two separate places is what it kind of felt like and now with all this quarantine stuff and god knows how long it's gonna go on for i think that's just going to really amplify that because reality is really kind of fading is what i feel like I, I don't know. I, I don't want to I don't want to sound too depressing about this kind of stuff, but honestly, I just I I'm one of those people that really kind of live in the future, and I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. Um I certainly can use it to my advantage sometimes, and one of the advantages that I find in kind of living in the future is that if I have something that's exciting enough to look forward to that's like a few months in advance or like up to a few months or i don't know maybe like half a year or even a year within that type of uh, time frame i find it much much easier to be diligent responsible and productive and just kind of zone in on the future that i'm looking forward to this makes me all sorts of things like i i can get kind of clumsy because i basically lose grip on the present like i lose grip on this the physical space around me i lose grip on what's going on from day to day because i'm so stuck in the future so that's something i had to actually work on a lot to in order to improve my general levels of productivity because you can't always have something to look forward to that's you know that's of sufficient magnitude i guess and that's one of the things that's making this quarantine situation so difficult for me right now is that all the things that i was looking forward to kind of got canceled <laughs> which really really sucks because i don't know it's like i planned my whole right life around that stuff Everything was kind of planned around the trips that I was planning to take because I spent so much time at home as it is that I really, really lived off of those trips. And now that everything's been canceled, it just sucks. <laughs> yeah, and so because of that, I've kind of been pretty unproductive and I, I like, 
downloaded League of Legends again and oh it's so I kind of got addicted to it because it's one of those things where you can pass time so fast with that shit you just like zone in and next thing you know it's been like three hours and it really reminded me of some like of some of the worst years of my life that I spent just kind of escaping reality with video games and such kind of recently actually like a few years ago only and i don't know i've just been in a super terrible mood so i think i'm gonna try to make a bigger effort into staying productive and staying on track and just kind of doing everything that i had planned to do in spite of the fact that i no longer have a break to look forward to i guess <laughs> yeah Anyways, this this video is just ending up extremely long and I don't know if it's even necessary for me to ramble throughout the entirety of it because <laughs> what kind of psycho would just sit here and talk for like an hour? I feel like I've already lost train of my thoughts like a thousand times while uh, recording this so I don't really know where to go with it. I, I guess I could talk to you guys about what 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 this video is it's just a warm-up session and i found a reference fo photo that i like of a girl petting a cat and i decided to make this like a longer study type of thing because sometimes i need to force myself to slow down and be a little more diligent about the sketching process so that's kind of what i ended up doing I don't know how useful that actually was, but it is what it is. Plus, I was testing out the new Tumble markers that I got. So, yeah. I actually thought of a couple more things that I could possibly talk about, but I figured that maybe once I run out of stuff to say, I'll just let the rest of the video play out because it is quite a long one. And a bunch of you guys said in my last video in the comments in the comment section that you really like the long format type of videos and maybe it's useful to see me do uh, like real time drawings or whatever. So I'm just gonna keep it up. But anyways, so another thing that I remembered about, I, I was listening back to the stuff already recorded and I guess it kind of got stuck on the notion of things that are maybe regrettable <clears throat> in my in terms of my artistic endeavors thus far and i don't know if some of you guys may know i feel like this is far enough into the video that it kind of obscures me potentially saying stuff that maybe i shouldn't be saying <laughs> that nobody's gonna bother listening all the way to this point but whatever um yeah, so I don't know if you guys know, but I have illustrated this graphic novel of 250 pages called Grimoire Noir that came out last year in late July, I believe it was. And I've hoarded like a ton of footage of um, me working, like just screen recordings of when I was working on the pages and stuff. So I have a lot of that. Um, there's two reasons why I haven't used any of it thus far in my YouTube channel. The first reason is because, unfortunately at the time, I didn't have much experience with recording stuff, uh, rec like recording the screen and whatnot. And I had no idea that it was done so easily via OBS, but I used this program called Camtasia to record my process and unfortunately Camtasia has its own stupid format and I don't even know if I still have that program on my desktop. I think I probably do but I think I would probably need to like open the files in Camtasia and then export them just so I can edit them in Premiere afterwards, which sounds like a huge pain in the ass because it's so much footage. And also, that program is such shit, it constantly crashes while exporting, so I don't even know if I can, but whatever, I'll give it a try at some point. And the second reason why I haven't used any of those is honestly because 
I had like this plan of doing a series, a video, a video series about um, my time working on Grimoire Noir and just basically everything like from how I found that job, why I took it, how it was, what it was like working with a publisher, what it was like working with a writer, how etc etc like all that stuff you know um and i obviously have a lot to say about many many of those things that i just brought up but one of the reasons that kept me from ever starting to do it is because it was actually kind of a terrible experience for me in a lot of ways um i don't really know how to even talk about that because so much negativity is associated with that experience for me still even though it's been like a year since it got released and m over two years since I finished uh, the last drawing that I did for it or whatever um, but yeah it was just it was a really really painful process in which I kind of just had to learn so many things the hard way and I feel like a lot of it was in some ways unfair maybe but you know looking back at it like I said I'm not the type of person who likes to regret generally speaking and I have to be honest like I, I usually try not to lie to myself and when it comes to that particular project, I can sit here and list like a thousand reasons why it was good for me and why it's not regrettable. Such as, I, I will do it right now, like some of, some of the things where I was forced to be diligent, I was forced to complete a project despite like having lost all enthusiasm for it, despite having worked alone basically for a lar large p part of it with zero involvement from anybody else which was driving me a little bit crazy but uh i did manage to complete it which was a huge achievement on, on my part like sometimes i still can't believe that i even managed to finish it because it was like an ungodly amount of work um i learned how to take myself more seriously, I learned the fact, like, I, I just learned a lot, a lot about what it's like working with other people and what it's like working with a publisher. I, as a result of how the whole thing played out and even, even a lot of the aftermath, like, at this point, it's been, I guess it's been a little over half a year since it has come out, which is maybe not long enough to see what, what's really up, but I can definitely see that uh, the, a lot of things that I had a gut feeling about or I had a lot of thoughts on in regards to the project from the very start, um, I kind of ended up downplaying for myself because I just kept telling myself that, you know what, like, this is my first time, like, being involved with a project like this, working with a publisher, etc. And I just graduated, like, this was a few months after I graduated, so I just told myself to take a back seat, you know what I mean? And I was just like, I like obviously these people are professionals, like they know better and all this other stuff, but eventually like when it was all said and done, I just it became clear to me that I wasn't wrong to think the things that I did and I wasn't off base by any means on any of the thoughts that I had regarding the project in the very beginning stages of it. So at the end of the day, one of the biggest things that it did for me, I guess, was solidify the fact that I should, in fact, trust my instincts. And it doesn't matter that maybe I have not as much experience as other people. That doesn't make my opinion any less valid. I mean, I suppose that could be arguable, but it doesn't matter to me. Well, basically what I learned was Having less confidence in your own judgment is always going to be bad for you than having more. Like, if if people are constantly telling you that you need to take a back seat and, like, that you don't understand things, you know what? It's good to listen to that to a certain extent, 
but but also if somebody constantly tries to just downplay your level of understanding things just because of some arbitrary thing like you haven't worked in the industry for x amount of years or it's your first official project with so-and-so company it's like that doesn't really mean anything you know what i mean but anyways i know that i actually haven't said anything terribly specific and this was all kind of like vague vague information but yeah so i don't know i'm still thinking about it on the one hand i feel like I do want to share my thoughts about it because even though it might appear that I would be kind of shining a negative light onto maybe certain even specific people that were involved in the project or even the publisher as a whole, which is something I don't necessarily want to do, but at the same time, I feel like it's precisely because nobody really does shine the light on what goes on behind the scenes and what it's like and what what can be expected, I guess, of working on projects like that. Um, is why a lot of people, much like myself probably, get trapped into like similar situations and have a really hard time during the process and I, I don't know maybe it's just maybe it is some sort of rite of passage but I do feel like I should have been more informed you know and I think that really what bit me in the ass the most about the whole situation was precisely my lack of confidence in myself because I just was under the impression that I needed to put in some sort of work like I needed to gain more and more experience and do this and like do that in order to allow myself to pursue my own my own projects maybe I was right I don't know like I, I couldn't tell you that's why I'm so I'm so conflicted about the whole thing because on the one hand maybe it was really good and necessary experience for me to have to like plan out uh this entire comic like you know, basically work with a script without having to do one myself, which is something that I obviously have a hard time with because I'm not a writer. But but at the same time, sometimes I do wonder that if maybe I just bet on myself instead of being like getting stuck once more in the must gain experience type of mindset that could be endless you know it it could have i could have been stuck in that forever for all i know like there's always something that i could find like i guess before i went on this long tangent i was trying to explain that i could i could make like a million reasons as to why this was a good project and it was a good experience but at the same time i do kind of wish that i had the mental strength and the faith in myself to just bet on myself instead of somebody else or you know what I mean because the more time passes the more I realize that creative energy is not infinite it, it is absolutely not infinite and when when you're part of a big project like I mean in my naive thoughts at the time I thought that it could be a situation in which I would treat it as my day job and then with my free time, I could write my own script and like, you know, uh, do all the preparation stuff so that as soon as I'm done this project, I'll be ready to move on to my own thing and etc. And I was wrong about that on so many levels. Like it ended up being the type of situation where once I was locked into the contract, it's not that I really hated working on it or anything like that. It's just that it required a lot of enthusiasm and that enthusiasm was a little bit fragile because it wasn't my project. What ended up happening was every time I attempted to work on my own script, I noticed that it I couldn't I just couldn't do it because it felt like I was split, I was trying to split myself in two. Because the work that I had to do for the the project that I was contracted for 
was so hard and it was so demanding that it took every ounce of enthusiasm that I could summon for that project and I couldn't share that enthusiasm with anything else because once I started working on trying to work out on my own script or trying to develop my own story I got so excited about it that all my enthusiasm for the current project faded just like that and and then I was like oh my god like how am I gonna finish this there's no way I'm gonna be able to finish this because it's such treacherous work and guys the biggest reason why the work was so goddamn treacherous was because it paid next to nothing like in the grand scheme of things there are many reasons why this is nobody's fault <laughs> except for my own because I'm the one who agreed to those terms and I'm the one who signed the contract and I'm the one who failed to do the math and I'm the one who underestimated the time and set the standard for the like I set the bar way too high for the the quality that I wanted to deliver and I suppose in some instances there's nothing wrong with being ambitious and even to this day, I can't say that I necessarily regret setting those high standards for myself, but it nearly killed me because working to that um, standard under those conditions, having zero assistance whatsoever and being paid what I was paid. Basically, I just want to explain that I, it, it was unsurvivable, like I couldn't survive off of that. So basically it wasn't even enough to cover food and rent on a month to month basis. So I still had to do stuff on the side pretty regularly in order to just keep up with life's expenses. And that put me in such an unfortunate situation that it almost like, like I'm not gonna say it almost killed me, but it made my life spin out of control in a way that like converged in the, the most unfortunate way that I could think at the time. But anyways, like, so what can I say? I don't know. I, I feel like I haven't, again, I haven't provided you guys with any specific information, but one of, I guess, the reason why I brought it up is because it was uh, like one of the maybe regrettable things that I still think about to this day sometimes. Uh, so many things, I feel like so many things went wrong with that project. Like, in just in terms of marketing and I don't know, I'm it, the, the whole thing is a big question mark to me. Like I still don't really understand what exactly went on. Like there was this huge lack of communication and I had a lot of expectations that were completely off and I wish I could have known more going in to it, I guess, and I did now. And the biggest thing that I think I took away from it is that at the end of the day, I think everybody needs to understand that when you're working with a company, uh, like a publisher or a studio any studio like this applies to any um just business place of business that employs a large amount of people that is basically there to make money and sustain itself aka a business those people naturally don't care about you as an individual they they don't care about your worth and if they can take you at a super, super uh, affordable rate for themselves, they will absolutely take you. And nobody's gonna offer you more money. Nobody's gonna ask you if that's gonna be enough for you to survive. Like, nobody's gonna think, like, nobody's gonna look at the amount of work and be like, hmm, you know what? Maybe this deserves a better rate. Like, none of that shit. No one cares. <laughs> You're just hired and. I, I thought that I I had some people on my side and I was wrong about that. Like at the end of the day, it turned out that unless you know people for years before you go into a project with them and you know that they're trustworthy and you know that they have your best interests in mind, 
don't trust anybody and this isn't even like a thing where everyone's evil everyone's out to get you it's just a simple fact of everybody being for their own best interests and oftentimes yours just aren't taking into account so that's that's one thing that i learned one of the many things that i learned um yeah and i guess you know what at the end of the day i did come out with much much needed information that i sim simply lacked before um i took that project on and honestly like one of the things that i found a little bit disheartening is that none of that i none of that really was ex brought up at any point in, when i was in college or university it's it's really weird to think back on that like i i suppose these things are not a given like it's probably more accurate to just observe any given situation or contract or job on a case-by-case -case basis and maybe there's not that much overlap or maybe nobody really focuses on the negatives because when you focus on negative things it's really hard not to kind of paint a bleak picture of a certain publisher or of certain people or something but it's like that doesn't change the fact that things played out the way that they did you know what i mean like personally what what would my goal be in talking about any of the stuff and potentially throwing some shade on people my goal would just be to inform anybody who might be in the position that i was when i was about to take that project and to just explain how things could go down or what could happen or what could potentially be expected that doesn't mean that everybody is the same that doesn't mean that every studio is the same but overall i can also say that i know quite a lot of people who work in the comic book industry and i've spoken to many of them about similar situations and everybody has horror stories so I am inclined to believe that I have more than ample evidence that it is a pretty common occurrence for to be mistreated, basically. And I, I suppose like it's not a, it shouldn't be a revelation either. And I don't know why I feel like I have to really justify any of this stuff because, I mean, I feel like I've heard this from just about anybody. It's like when you're young and you're like fresh out of college or something the chances of you getting scooped up and basically um <laughs> treated like crap are very high like taken advantage of yeah that's just what happened and and then you learn how, that's how it is and then you learn how to get what you want properly and you learn that nobody's just gonna hand it to you on a silver platter and you also learn that if you don't respect yourself, nobody will respect you. And if you don't have your own best interest in mind, and if you don't dictate your own worth, nobody's going to help you out with that either. And yeah, this is all pretty standard type of stuff. So unfortunately, if I will go into details when it comes to my time working on this project, I will inevitably make some people sound bad or something. But you know what? I mean, what can I say? Like, that doesn't mean they're bad people. It doesn't mean that I think poorly of them. It's just, you know, certain things happened and they had a negative effect on me and that's just how it goes. And yeah. I guess at this point I really rambled on and on and I did kind of lose track of time. I think this um, should bring me to the end of this video. And... I will put some links in the description to the materials that I used and I'm sorry that I barely talked about the actual sketch at all and but you know what I think it's pretty boring and self-explanatory anyway so there's that but yeah I will hopefully make another video sooner than I did this one and I thank you all for watching and I don't know I hope this video kept you company in this time of isolating and social distancing so i will see you guys in my next one bye